Hey everybody. Just wanted to show you a little bit of what happens every morning in many, many places in New England. And some of you might be new poor and uh, new to wood stoves. I'm certainly not. I grew up with wood heat. My parents still heat with wood. And this is the little stove I have in my shop. I just want to show you uh, how to manage a wood stove on a real basic level. Because some people may have never had one. First thing you want to do, well, the first thing I do anyway, is you'll get a better view of this when I move the camera around. I open the vent. I open the door. I pull this off. I open the damper here. You can't quite see the damper, but the damper is just basically a little flap that's inside this, uh, this stove pipe. You turn it. It's a big piece of steel. You turn it from here closed to here open so air can start flowing through. As air starts flowing through, I start building my fire. And I'm going to use my ever-present Zippo as an ignition source, and I'm going to use uh, PJ cotton balls. And, yeah, you can use newspaper or whatever you have, but I'm, I tend to make huge batches of PJ cotton balls, and this will last me, while well, I just refilled this, this little mayonnaise jar, this lasts me a couple of years, because I don't, I don't think I've, I made the initial batch about three years ago. But once you've got all that open, because... You don't want to start the fire and then open your damper because it's, your house is going to fill with smoke. So I'm going to move the camera over here and see if I can get you an angle so you can see uh, see what else is going on. So bear with, we're going to move around some. All right. The trick here is going to be allowing you to see without blocking it with my fat ass. as I work. All right, so this is how I do it. There are many ways. And just so you know, I find it a little easier to build a fire outside because you can move all around it. So first thing I do is I take a couple pieces of wood and put them inside like this. This isn't always how I do it, but this is, this is a pretty small wood stove. Put them inside like that. Can you see that? I think you can. Yeah. Okay. So you basically got a little channel. I'm going to take a piece of wood. Sometimes I use a piece of bark. It depends on what I have. And I'll take, let's say, three or four cotton balls, put them on there. And also notice that I have all my wood, all my kindling pre prepped. All of this is ready to go already. I've seen many people out in the woods start a fire, they'll, they'll get ignition, they get excited, and then they have to go run around, look for twigs and stuff to pile on it. That, that's crazy. Have all that stuff ready to go before you even start. And uh, generally I'll bust things up a little bit, but this is, again, this is a, when I want to work in the shop, this is a daily thing, so this is no big deal. And... So what I'm going to do, kick this off, handy dandy Zippo, the ideal gift for every occasion, just like firearms and ammunition. Let this get started up, put it right in the middle, and you'll see that those two pieces of wood on the side give me the opportunity to stack pieces, smaller pieces of wood right over that flame without them falling directly on it to smother it because you need plenty of oxygen to start this off. Some of you guys are like, yes, everybody knows this. I used to think the same thing. Not everybody knows this. And I'm not saying I know it all. Not hardly. Because I am a dumbass. But I can build a fire. Get in there, you. You're getting plenty of oxygen here because the vent's open, the door's open, the, uh, the top's open. And it's venting right outside. Once that starts taking off, it's going pretty good. And this is all this, all I've got for kindling here is just, it's an old, old small section of two by six I split up. It's pretty dry. That's the big thing is having, a, having enough dry wood or nearly dry wood because there was one winter that I was camp living up there that I had some dry wood. 
and some well seasoned wood. And what I did is I started the, the fire with the drier wood and I would pile on the seasoned wood or oh, sorry, the uh, the wetter wood once I went to work and I would come back and there'd be a nice bed of coals there for me to, to work with after a 12 or 14 hour shift. All right, so now you can see that this is taken off pretty good. So now generally you'd put larger things like this on it and kind of build up a little bit, but that's not what I have. I have some split wood and this is gonna run just fine. I'll just throw this on here like that. I allow in a bunch of oxygen, a bunch of space for oxygen. And put that on like here. And I'm going to let, actually let this burn like this for a little while until those uh, larger pieces of wood, wood catch. And then I'll start shutting it down, closing it up, and putting bigger wood on top. And that's basically it. Very ele elementary skill, but I've seen people do a lot of stupid things trying to build a fire in a stove which don't make any sense like i've seen people start a fire this like this and then put newspaper over the top of it just sheets of newspaper thick sheets of newspaper over the top of it thinking well this paper is going to burn well no not in that form see look at that it's taken off nicely you can see the draft is is coming in here fueling the fire with oxygen Coming right up to, uh, right up the chimney. Nothing to it. Throw a couple more sticks on there, and we'll be ready to go. But anyway, that's fire building 101. And like I said, whoo, almost knocked the camera over. Like I said, in New England, this is a, a daily thing for many, many people. And it's one of those things that, if you notice, this is a, I guess what you'd call an analog system. Nobody can shut this down at the stroke of a pen. When the power goes out, this still works. Uh, still works in the dark. No matter what, it's pretty reliable technology. Perhaps that's why they want to make wood stoves illegal and ban their use and possession and all that good stuff. I know it's not a big thing now, but oh, it will be. It will be. Because if you can provide your own heat, provide your own cooking, cooking, and you know, this this wood stove is probably, oh, let's say even with its flange, it's probably less than three feet long, a foot wide, oh, 14, 15 inches high. Oh, maybe, maybe 18 inches with the legs. And I didn't pay much for it. In fact, I traded a 22 rifle for it. And this has been in my shop for at least 10 years now, or longer. And uh, it's been plugging right along. I did take it out this fall, and uh, I repainted it. I fixed a few things. Oh, uh, I put some new bolts in it. You know, just the general maintenance and stuff. But as long as you don't abuse it, like by pouring cold water on it while it's hot and all that kind of stuff, it's going to last a long, long time. So... Anyway, there's your fire. I hope it warms you up. See ya.